Giovanni from Allen Big, the Creative Drinks Agency that specializes in design, development and marketing of quality drinks, education and beverage experiences. Allen Big and ICCA Dubai together brings to you Cocktail Zero, the art of alcohol-free design drinks. Our certificate programs in dry mixology and bartending showmanship are designed not only for inspiring bar professionals working in the industry, but also for the serious enthusiasts interested in learning the art of a mixology. Come, introduce yourself to the fascinating and soul-stirring world of alcohol-free designer drinks. Good afternoon from Dubai and a very and a very good afternoon to all the viewers to, who are joining us today. Welcome to ICC Live, World Class Culinary Online. Today we have yet another interesting session on dry mixology and bartending, aperitives, the stimulant drinks. I would now like to hand over to our host, Shanaz Raja, Director of Courses at the ICCA Dubai. Over to you, Shanaz. Thank you, Karun. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is our fourth webinar in the series and bartending. If you are here for the first time, the previous three webinars are available for you to view on YouTube. On YouTube. And if you can't find them, let us know and we will send you the links. Once again, for those of you who are with us for the first time, a very short intro on master mixologist Giovanni De Pegola, only known as Mr. G, who will be taking our session today. Mr. G has over 20 years of experience in the beverage industry in Europe and MENA region. And he is also the co-founder of Alembic, a, a creative drinks agency which specializes in training and education. During this session, Mr. G will have a few questions for you which will pop up as polls. And if you have any questions for Mr. G, do type them into the chat and I will take them up for you. Without taking more of your time, over to you, Mr. G. Hey, hey, thank you very much, Anas. Thank you, Karun. That was a great introduction, as usual, fantastic. And welcome, you guys, really welcome. Today is all about uh, aperitif. Wow, what a session. So really interesting. Definitely one of my favorite. You know, in Italy, we definitely know how to enjoy aperitif. So I'm going to take you through a little journey today to understand uh, what kind of characteristics we're looking for. Now, before to jump on the session today, uh, I will take you a little bit back. You know, some people probably connect today for the first time. So here in ICCA, we run a course called Dry Mixology Bartending, Bartending and it's only focused on cocktail zero. So no alcohol, no alcoholic cocktails. So very fascinating world. For us, it's beauty because we play with so many different ingredients here. And when the students are coming along, they really have fun because it's very hands-on, they have time to do all the learning that is necessary for your foundation. That's when we start our episode, we were talking about the, actually the fundamentals. So we really discussed about the tools of the trade, how to utilize certain uh, tools, and then also we learn how to really implement them through the method and techniques. And actually last week was a very interesting session regarding the glassware, so the importance of how to really choose a good glass for your great cocktail. So, uh, and we also saw the difference between a glass and a crystal. So we had a, a lot of questions coming along. So really, really cool sessions. And we have to say the interaction has been very good because then we have a, a lot of follow-up to do by emails, people asking questions related, of course, in the wonderful world of the cocktails. So today is about aperitif. What does it mean? Well, through our course, what we just do, we, we divide the entire world of cocktails in five different categories. And pretty much this is what's happening in the lovely uh, world of cocktails. So what we do, you normally have an aperitif, then you normally have a food friendly, so something that you will drink along with your favorite food. And then we have outdoor. So outdoor means you can either be by the garden or by the pool. Why not? And then you have something related to teas and coffee. And then, of course, we close it with a, one of the trendy sessions, which is the tiki style. Well, tiki is a very, very trendy at the moment. Uh, people really enjoy that part. We will have a session dedicated to tiki, so we can go there much more in details when we're going to talk about around tiki cocktails. So 
So we really divide by those five categories because it's very important. When we apply in terms of a cocktail, a cocktail has always a specific characteristic when also it should be enjoyed. Uh, in general, of course, if we are in the alcohol business, we never drink things uh, in the morning. Uh, however, when we are about non-alcoholic cocktails, uh, also, you know, a part of your fresh juices is something that you can have in the morning. It's a great, a, a specific time where to enjoy certain cocktails because they're really performing better. And this is what we're going to really talk about today, which is about the aperitif. Now, aperitif is not something that is new, has been there for a long time. Imagine that even the Romans, you know, uh, they were enjoyed, they used to uh, spice their wine uh, to actually to preserve, uh, to give a much more longer shelf life, because that's what spices they do. They give a much more shelf life to uh, an ordinary wine. And then, so that was the beginning of the vermouth, so very enjoyed and very simple. So an aperitif in general has a characteristic to be a very dry and bitter, so really, really important to remember that. Because the actual word aperitif, it, means from a, it comes from a Latin, which is called aperire. Well, in Italian it means aprire, which means to open. So something that really will stimulate, and Carol mentioned, the stimulate drinks. So that was on our time today. It's true because an aperitif should stimulate, stimulate our, our tasting bites, should stimulate our, our appetite. So really, really important, what are kind of the ingredients we choose. So definitely a bit of a herbal and bitter, those are the characteristics that really our palates um, uh, and, and the entire senses are going to wake up and prepare for the meal. You know, we should never forget how we normally we taste it. So the tongue normally tastes uh, the sweetest in the front, the bitters at the back, salt and sour on the side, and then we have the fifth element, which is the umami. Now, that's something that probably comes across in, mostly in a lot of uh, Asian cuisine, uh, but also in, a, in tomatoes and cheese they also have. Not definitely the case of today, but this is good to know. So then we also understand the texture, you know, it's very important, the texture uh, in a cocktail. So when we talk about aperitif, a good aperitif, also a bit of a barrage. So a nice carbonation should be, it can come from a champagne or sparkling wine. Uh, no alcoholic sparkling wine are really great with good fertilizer. Well, actually, we can have today a bit of a showcase of a nice, cool uh, uh, soft drinks here. We do have so they will showcase a couple of one. One is called Viscous, so that would be very interesting to see. And the other one is uh, super cool because it's one of my favorite. It has a twist of a grapefruit tonic, so really, really citrus. Now, so this is pretty much. Uh, the, uh, a bit of an intro, understanding more of what are the characteristics of an aperitif. And this, this is, uh, for us, is crucial. So when we enjoy a good aperitif, it's just before the meal. You know, normally, if we, if we go in Italy, I'm sure you guys often travel to Italy this year, during the summertime you will see people enjoy outside the bars and the square, the lovely aperitif. And this is what happened there. They really enjoy the feeling of having this light carbonated, with their uh, small finger food that always goes together. So that's why it's a big difference between an aperitif and what you will see next week when we're going to talk about the food friendly. That category is different because it will have characteristics that will match, a bit of a food matching idea. So what should be a good cocktail that will match with that kind of style of food? So we can have a few foods here, but that's for next week. So, so today we will concentrate on this. So, what I will say, uh, uh, since Shahaz told us, uh, we, I will drop a question uh, to you. So let's say if so far, probably we are just at, uh, almost at the beginning of our session where we give a small intro of the aperitif. Shahaz, shall we do a small poll before we start in actually making the cocktail? Shall we ask our, our guests? I think we will put a question there. Let's see if all the guests are, uh, or I am explained myself very well. So let's see. Yeah, so the question is, what kind of characteristics should an aperitif cocktail have? And uh, the, the, uh, the questions, uh, the answers are sweet and bubbly, slightly bit bitter and carbonated, dry and fruity. Okay, so let's see. I think they what? can't go wrong on this one. You've just told them the answer. And okay. so the everyone answer is getting it right? No, no. 60% say it's bitter and carbonated. 13% uh, say it's dry and fruity. 
and about 30% say it's sweet and bubbly. Okay, okay. Now, well done for the guys that we say is uh, bitter and that's when you reckon, always have that in mind. When you come across an aperitif, always think of that bitter. And the light carbonation is a plus. Uh, of course, there are other elements too that are going to be involved. There's herbal tones, there's dry. But when we say fruity, in general, fruity means uh, people associate to a uh, much more sweeter style. Imagine a classic passion fruit that normally we know passion fruit is quite round, has a flavor, very tropical. So we can't really come across as, uh, even if it's, it's a bit sour, it's too fruity, it's too floral. So it cannot come across as an aperitif. Uh, and uh, like the same, you will see probably other tropical flavor. So when we stick into that uh, fruitiness, we have to go a bit of a berry sign that has a, a very cool, bitter, sweet idea. So that's what we normally find in the raspberries, uh, in the certain berries, so the cranberry, for instance. So these are really, really good aperitif style. So the bitter element is the main thing. So well done to you guys. For the rest, please stay focused because we can have a couple more. And this is what we, we, we don't want to reveal more because we have a couple more deathly to um, polls to come to you. So, enough of talking, I will say I will jump on making a wonderful first aperitif. So, what do we mean by that is actually I'm going to make one of the really uh, super beautiful channels. We can show the actually the, the, the recipe here because we have a recipe uh, that you later you can download. It. So, now I will see. What we have here, we have a spritz syrup, and I will tell you about what exactly is that. Then we have a, few, um, a lemon juice, and then we have a pasteurized egg white, and here you can have a lot of different substitution. And then we will have, as mentioned, one of our my favorites, which is the, uh, the actually the carbonated, uh, which is the, the grapefruit tonic style. So that's what is it. So let's go back on the screen and let's see what we make in here. Now, here we have, so one of these, as, as mentioned, so this cocktail is the spritz. The spritz actually is, a, is actually a cocktail on its own. And the guys here, there's a few brands that they have replicated uh, the, the, this orangey flavor. Now the spritz is something made in Veneto, in a region in Italy. Uh, so we are really, really, uh, when, you, when you visit, you will see the guy that was serving this balloon, actually a fantastic good friend of mine. We call that the fish ball, you know? And he always makes this beautiful balloon with a nice, so fresh, and he gets together his spritz. So he actually is normally has a liquor called the Aperol. So Aperol spritz is a cocktail that he's made with Prosecco, uh, and then he's done with a splash of soda water. So those are three elements, very simple drinks, garnished with an orange. So we are replicating here a bit of that texture. So we want uh, our goal in cocktail series really to bring you the same feeling, because either you normally consume alcohol, or you know, maybe you don't, but you want to have that same texture and feeling. So here is the spritz, what is inside. Then we will have the uh, lemon juice, and the, here we have the actually uh, fresh lemon juice. And here I always go between 10 to 15 milliliters. That's entire really up to you uh, how you want to balance. So this is a bit of the bitter, the sweet and the sour goes together. And then we have, will have the pasteurized egg white. There we go. And here, pretty much, what we do, we will shake it together. We'll have this fantastic foaming, so we'll have that really nice texture. And then we're going to finish with our top of the grapefruit tonic. So let me do that. So I will say that the, the history is young. So the, the, the spritz was something born around the beginning, I will say, 1920s, 1990s, 1920. So what happened there? They really go so popular, and people nowadays, they love it, a bitter sweet idea. And this is what we want to replicate here. So let's see. Good shaking here. Don't forget, we saw that in the past that we don't never shake carbonated inside. So what we're going to do here, we're going to make that uh, bitter sweet mix together with the egg white. So really creates that foamy, foamy and texture, and then we'll mix with that. Let's see. Excellent. Oh, this is what we want. Beautiful. You know, I wish you can smell what lies, man. So, in this case, I will do a 
Now this is a kind of a, of really of a sound that we're looking for that very cozy. And then we finish it. So the spritz is extremely popular. I've been probably I would say outside Italy in the last uh, the last ten years, but definitely the last five probably exploded. So really, really, and this is what we will see. Look at that. So what, this is what people are engaged with the spreads. This is what they like to see. It's that foaminess, nice, you know, that's what a good spreads will look like. And we go. And uh, of course, there's no spreads without uh, the garnish that normally is an orange, it's an orange slice or, or an orange wedge. So in this case, what I will do, uh, I will just put an orange zest, so, uh, this is what we do. We have a beautiful zest that will go on top. Now, mentioned a few times, sometimes the oil around here uh, a bit uh, a bit too bitter for some people. So we tend to, when I like to by myself, because I like really bitter taste, I like to rip around, but sometimes people don't really enjoy that part. What I really like to rip around here is something that is the kaffir lime leaves, something like this, that brings a lot of floral notes. And what we do is pretty much like this, and then we go inside. There we go. So this is the, our citrus press. Let me show you here. And you can clearly see much closer and nice, beautiful, nice form. And now pretty much is a time to try. So let me let me have a sip because you can't you can't make it without trying. Ooh, I really like this coffee because the grapefruit really kicks in a lot of citrus and then that bitter uh, the bitter sweet elements of the lemons and the, and the spritz and then of course the finishing of the really floral of the elder, elder, of the kaffir lime leaves. In case you don't find kaffir lime leaves, they're very common in Asian cuisine, you know. You will find them in the supermarket, very common. In case you don't find, well, on the season you can get uh, maybe a lemon, lemon leaves, so you can find uh, also some mandarin leaves. So pretty much any citrus leaves will do because they really contain a lot of oil. So really, really, really cool. So I really like that uh, to use when we do cocktail decoration like that. It's simple and it's of course cost effective. So in terms of if we're running the bar, it really has a lot of interaction. We call them the functional drinks. So this is our citrus spritz. Uh, all around the, the, the spritz, the, the, the guys when they come here to school, we take them through uh, their own creation as well, so they can have a bit of variation in place of this plenty of, uh, of a different style we can do. Yeah? So, um, Shanaz, I think we, we prepare something between now. Can we ask one more question to our guests and eh, our this, viewers? But before that, Giovanni, I have a question from our viewers. They are quite taken with you using egg in the drink, and I think they missed it when you showed us the methods and techniques. Uh, so Swapnali wants to know what characteristic does the egg give? But I'll tell you all the questions and you can answer them together, okay? And so Swapnali asks, what characteristic? Ashish says, uh, will, it will it hit the taste of the drink? And La Laram says, uh, some guests don't like egg white, so do you have any other suggestion for that? Yes, very yes, good. I like this question. Th thank you very much for asking this question. Uh, we mentioned those uh, uh, previously, so what we do, we tend to use, uh, normally if you want to, uh, in a very safe environment, you can use a fresh egg white, uh, then or you normally we use a pasteurized egg white, so we did in this case, it's a pasteurized so really it doesn't have any kind of a so zero risk or anything. Now that's in case of someone on the healthy side. Uh, in, uh, in case someone doesn't really like, or maybe we put like a vegan options here, you can have soya powder. So there is actually a powder which is soya, really easy to do it. Uh, so really easy to, uh, to make it. it, will give us really that foam. Uh, in case then you get also the aquafaba, which is made from the chickpeas. So chickpeas, also the, the brine water, that really works very well. So there's many alternative there. In terms of the flavor, now the, uh, the pasteurized white doesn't really 
give much of the flavor, but really gives the, the texture. Probably the fresh egg will give the egg white. Um, but what we do, as you can see, when we squeeze, when we, the zest of the oil, we really will, we really kill any, any kind of a smell that will come from probably in the fresh egg white. The, the, the actual pasteurized will not have that exact same smell. So mostly then the flavor, the egg white brings the texture, so it gives a very silky uh, feeling. Now, if you don't like to use none of those, uh, at the end of the day, uh, you can do without. Uh, then, of course, the, it will be slightly different texture, but we still give you a really nice feeling because then you can't really, uh, you can really substitute that feeling uh, uh, in terms of the, of the velvety when you're actually sitting. So that's uh, what we want to achieve. So thank you, very nice questions. I like it, I like it. So now we're going to let give them a poll from our side. And yeah. the question is, which is the most appropriate time to enjoy an aperitif? Before dinner, no, after dinner, during lunch, before any meal. So Giovanni, 83% say before any meal, 16% say during lunch, and nobody says after dinner. <laughs> Great, excellent, very nice, that's good, well done, well done. Absolutely, 100%, so this one should have been 100%, not 83%. Why is oh, totally, it's before the meal. Why? Because it comes from the, as we mentioned, the lacking, the aperire, the aprire, to open, so really some stimulated, and that's what we want to give to you. So when you actually enjoy your feeling, then your tasting buds are all over and then you're ready to go for a meal. It can be your lunch or it can be your, your dinner. Of course, normally people prefer to have uh, uh, mostly, uh, I will say, uh, uh, during on your day off. You know, well, what a great day to have a lunch before the lunch or a great aperitif. But most of the aperitif normally are consumed before the dinner. But of course, we will see next week when we're going to talk about lunch and dinners and all this kind of food when we do the food friendly category. So that's something we will discuss next week. So let me introduce you another classic cocktail, uh, another aperitif style, which is the hibiscus americano. So hibiscus americano. Why americano is actually a classic cocktail called americano. And this cocktail is now what we're going to see today. Here we have the bitter. So it's actually it's something that's been replicated as a bitter. Then we have the cranberry, so the berry side. Then we have some ginger, so a good element of a, of a little the spiciness. And then we have the fresh lemon juice. And then we're going to top up with a splash of the, uh, the actual hibiscus tonic water. So super cool. So let me show you what we actually we are going to do here. And the, the cocktail, you probably saw, it has a, an interesting technique, it's a rolling technique. So in rolling technique, we're using two pieces of shaker like this one. Uh, what are we going to see? In case you don't have the roller shaker like this, you can usually use a mixing glass like this. Uh, what's going to happen? The purpose is the same, you just like the, the technique is different. This is a more professional approach. This is a bit more, I will say, um, uh, uh, enthusiast, enthusiast style, so you can actually stir for the people they watched us during our the, the technique. This is a very simple. You just need this ice and the spoon and then to mix it together. So let's jump and see now what we're going to have. So the we will have the bitter here. So the 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 bitter it really replicate in Italy and around the world. There is a the, the world famous bitter which is called Campari. Now, Campari is, is the most world famous cocktail, bitter around that you can see. Then, what else we have? We're going to have some nice cranberry juice. Eh? I will say, well, I think we have 60 milliliters in our recipe. And this is what we do here. And voila. And then we will have a bit of a lemon juice. And for my taste, I will go for 10. So, 10 to 15 milliliters is what we really want to uh, recommend for you to balance. So, we have the the actual the three ingredients are already inside the cranberry, the, the lemon juice, and then we put the, the bitter uh, from Fabric guys that really replicate that flavor. Uh, so, really interesting bitter sweet. Now, one more thing really attached is the ginger, which is here. And now, this is a bitter. Last week, we saw someone asking us why we are using the bitters inside our cocktails. 
Uh, well, the reason we use it we're using wheat and now cotton, it's because we like to really balance. We have a difference between the bitter, what we use as, as what we saw as a syrup, because that is quite sugary. This bitter is completely uh, dry and is really, this is a ginger bitter in this case. So really, really interesting when you have so intense. So that's why two drop. What's gonna happen when we're gonna start really uh, uh, rolling is gonna open up. So really will release a lot of the of the beautiful flavor because ginger is very interesting. So even two drops really blends very well with the bitter or bitter sweet of the orange. That's what the base is for that kind of bitter. And then you will have the cranberry and the splash of the lemon juice. So this is what they let me open this and what's gonna happen here. I love this hibiscus. Now hibiscus is a a, a classic uh, something that very much used here in Middle East uh, is the carcade. Some people like to enjoy the hibiscus during the summer. So really, it's a tea at the end of the day. You can you can find nice and fresh. I will probably have here something for you uh, to show you. Uh, this is the actually the hibiscus and yeah, super cool. We're gonna see that, uh, the, and then you just pretty much you boil with the hot water and you get a beautiful tea from here. And same, it's a very floral, but also quite dry. So very interesting. So the dry element is there. It's not bitter, but it's quite dry. For some people, dryness also will come as a, a little bit bitter, just at the back of your tongue there. So let's have this one on the glass we're going to serve is pretty much here. with our rock slash, and then we will have. Now, Americano cocktail, what a great, what a great. Americano is a classic, so which is made from Campari, Vermeer Trosso, and soda water. So here what we're going to replicate is exactly the same. Now here, since we have the bubble and we don't shake it, what we want is literally to mix well. Now this is a technique, well, I'm using two things. Those two things are getting colder. So as soon as I really, this is an excellent technique that as soon as you start feeling in your finger the coldness around the shaker, pretty much the cocktail is ready. And Americano is something that was uh, born to, to please eh, the American, eh, the, the, where they were the Dolce Vita style in Italy. They were really enjoying this style. So, and this is where it was a bit uh, too bitter for them to drink in just the Campari soda and then they introduce something like this. Now, I will definitely go for a, a nice, cool orange zest, sorry, orange wedge. Mm -hmm. Look at this, beautiful. And then the finishing, I will put some hibiscus here. I will show you on this camera here, and you guys can pretty much see how it really looks like. The, the, the nice orange. Now, I really like to give the full nice orange wedge on this one, is because then many people really enjoy to, to really have the squeeze, the squeeze of the orange on top, if you really want to enjoy a bit of an extra, extra uh, touch of the orange. Let me have a sip. Ooh, nice, very nice. Now, it, the fact that, uh, you know, this Americano, uh, we saw that last people, last people were people asking about the Negroni, which is very much an Americano, without the, uh, the, uh, the soda water we put in the gin, so it really works very well. In this case, an element, the hibiscus and the cranberry and the ginger and the bitter is really a great combination. So really, they marry together. So it's a very simple to replicate at the, at the end of the day, but really works. So this is something that is looks good, it feels good, and the texture of the light bubbling carbonation coming from the uh, hibiscus uh, tonic water really works. So I think that's pretty much, uh, I will say, in terms of the aperitif, and I'm happy to get a few questions, I will say those are the two cocktails that we've been showcasing today. Uh, the citrus 
uh, spritz and one is the Americano. Similar in the way of flavor, different on terms of colors and in terms of the, really of the texture. So, Shanaz, I'm happy to get some questions here before uh, we can wrap everything for the day. And uh, I will do a nice recap before we close it. So, let me know if there are more questions. I can't hear you, Shanaz. Sorry. Okay, so Ashish wants to know if the Fabri bitter is made from cherry. Ah, okay, that's a good question. Uh, no, the, the guys are not making, that's made because they are very famous for their Amarena cherry. So they actually have a cherry. Uh, I mean, we all draw up in Italy with a certain flavor and when you go to an ice cream shop, a lot of times the guys, they have this Amarena cherry. But no, in this case, it's made for bitter. The bitter is not made from Amarena. It's actually as it's made from, the, from an orange. So the essence and everything, of course, all the rest of the aroma. So no, no, it's not made from a, from a cherry. I like that question. Bravo, bravo. And uh, Lara again wants to know what herbs go well with hibiscus? Which herbs? Go with hibiscus. Ah, okay. Well, I tell you, uh, hibiscus is, uh, a, as much as a very distinctive flavor, it's quite versatile at the same time. So I will say that really goes very well with the meat. So meat also goes very well. Uh, I really enjoy Imagine if you do your cacades or your hibiscus tea, you just put everything. It, the fact that you can drink also chill, so you can leave uh, and drink in the, when it's cold, you can stick it in, in the fridge. Uh, you can also, it uh, takes a lot of advantage from a citrus point of view. So a lemon or thyme, a lemon thyme goes also very well. So fresh meat, thyme, those are really good elements to mix with, um, with the actual hibiscus. Okay. Uh, another question that I've got privately is, uh, is there any particular glass that I could use to serve an aperitif? Okay, or good, very good. Uh, now, glass well, we discussed about this last week, and we saw uh, a lot of different shape and different style and materials as well. So, in terms of a glassware, as you can see today, we use a tool, so the carbonation is something that during an aperitif takes really is a very pretty much welcome from our side. So in this case, uh, a tall glass will go. Uh, a rocks glass like this large, this is too, uh, this is quite large. So in terms of size, a good 300, 350 milliliter glass will work well. Um, so with ice, you probably put the liquid around 200 milliliter. But also, you know, if you think about, uh, we had, uh, I'm just checking if I have something here or not, I don't have with me, but then you have the champagne flute, also can be used uh, in terms of uh, if you want to have uh, a no, no, no sparkling, uh, sorry, sparkling wine, uh, a zero sparkling wine uh, with a bit of a lemon, so it really works very well. So the, the entire glass, definitely uh, in terms of an aperitif, if you work on the cocktail zero element, I will stay away from the straight up cocktail, uh, straight up glass like this, it, 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 it's it kind of like became a bit more complicated to balance them. So we definitely with the students when they come to the school here, we'll, we can do something, but it takes a bit of skills to go around. So we, for the guys to know how to really balance. So like this, easy to replicate one, two, three uh, ingredients, and then you can get away. So I like that question on classroom. Thank you. And Bibek, uh, Bibek wants to know if hibiscus goes well with pomegranate juice. Oh, okay. I think I got a lot of attention with this hibiscus today. <laughs> yeah, I got you. That's good. That's very nice. Hibiscus questions. Of course, I knew it. hibiscus is a traditional here in Middle East. Also in Italy, we're using the carcade. Uh, we love that. You know, this is fresh in the summertime, and we know how hot it can get, so really pleasant. Uh, now, pomegranate. Absolutely, pomegranate is a, is a, it goes very well for the it balance. You know, in this case today, we use, we use the uh, cranberry juice, uh, so the berry side. But pomegranate, hundred percent, because pomegranate, don't forget, has that also that bitter sweet feeling. You know, if you forever you bite some seeds, you can get a really dry and bitter, but also the outside. So a very nice ripe pomegranate will give you a very good, uh, nice and sweet but also dry and bitter taste. So pomegranate and hibiscus, 
is a great combination. So well done for your question, Brad. So the last question is uh, a bit strange, uh, a little away from uh, hibiscus. It says, "Is pineapple juice good to use in cocktail in aperitifs?" Ah, uh -huh. okay. I like this question. Well done. Uh, now, what we mentioned is at the very beginning the, the fact that there are certain flavors that associate us uh, in for certain in, in a certain environment. So let's say. A pineapple juice, for instance, the, uh, uh, I would not call a, a good, a nice, uh, we hear it, especially in Dubai, we find very cool, a nice uh, uh, Philippines pineapple. I know John is watching us. John is one of our the, uh, beautiful cameramen behind the, 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 the scene here. And now he's watching me and saying, yeah, pineapple from Philippines are the best. Um, uh, absolutely. Uh, so pineapple, it, as, as much as it's great, I love the pineapple also from uh, uh, Sri Lanka, super sweet. Uh, the Indian guys, absolutely fantastic. The female style, very sweet. So the fact that the pineapple has a very a lot of uh, notes of sweetness that it doesn't really go uh, into the uh, aperitif style because it will be too tropical. So if you are one of the viewers on regular, you will see that in one of the session you will see 100% the pineapple. On his best, the way he's performing, because pineapple definitely is nothing go as an aperitif, but it's such a great, I would say, outdoor uh, outdoor uh, ingredients that we can enjoy. So that's a that's a good question. Definitely, I will stay away from the pineapple. Even so, there are a couple of recipes, but now we talk about an advanced level. So I think the guys when they come here at the school, they get that part on the level two, because that's how to really transform certain. A flavor in something. So, really, thank you very much. So, guys, Janice, this was fantastic. Okay? So many questions. I like all about the business of flavor. So, do we have more questions? Yeah, just one or two quick ones, okay? So, Carsten wants to know what do you think about uh, hibiscus cacade margarita? Hibiscus cacade margarita, okay. <laughs> now, uh, we did the recipe here last week. Uh, we did the sparkling margarita. You remember, we did it. of course, everything we do here in ICCA at the school with Alemic, everything we is all related to couple zero, so dry mixologies. Uh, so when we do a margarita, of course, we don't have any 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 usage of tequila or orange liquors. Those are the ingredients you use normally into your margarita. Here we do a recipe. Uh, definitely using an agave, so we do an agave nectar, which is the plant where the tequila is coming from, uh, and then we will mix with the, definitely with the lime, uh, and then with our flavoring. I will say the hibiscus or the cacade will work very well for the margarita because it has that element of a floral, dry, so really works very well because that will match with the lime, as I mentioned before, it works with the lemon. So why not? So I think hey, I, this is good. I, I like to try yours, by the way. Uh, when you guys have something to share, send us your pictures so we can actually uh, see what you guys are doing at home on your favorite bar because this is uh, very, uh, very interesting for us to see you guys on action as well. Yeah? Giovanni, would you suggest, sorry, 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 I thought you, you're done. Would you suggest any other flowers other than hibiscus for apparatus specifically? Any other flower? Yes. Well, uh, flower, probably, let me think about it. Well, you see, uh, if we say flower flavor, I will say elderflower. Elderflower is uh, also something that we would like we, we use uh, when we talk about aperitif. However, elderflower tend to be, uh, if you're using a cordial, or if you're using a syrup, or if you use an extract, it's a bit of a tricky to be used. You, you know, you kind of know how to balance, which is extremely important. Otherwise, you end up with the sweetness of too much because a lot of the other flower called the other syrup you will find around the level of sweet is quite high. So you need to know how to balance. Uh, so uh, always remember that a good way not, not exceed uh, the 10 milliliter, that will be enough. And then you always need to balance with a bit of a, a lemon or lime, depending on the, fl on the flavor that you would like to achieve. And also, uh, well, and the flower also with the mint. You know, mint is very nice when you talk about uh, a good aperitif. It's nice because it's always very fresh and stimulating. So very cool. So in terms of flower, I would say elderflower is the one that I would like to use. Of course, the color will be different. 
Calcadeo, Ibisco Springs, a lot of red. The elderflower is uh, almost kind of like pale yellow, so it really gets the more transparency. So that's a, a good one. Yeah? One last question for the day before we close. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> There's so many. Okay, so what says, uh, ask you to talk about a few common mistakes that people make when they make aperitifs. Ah, okay. There were a few common mistakes when they people. Yes. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, this is a uh, this is an interesting question. You know, we always we showcase what to do. Uh, we don't concentrate on what not to do. You know, when we do those kind of things. Well, uh, uh, if we look in back on what we did today, and of course our session will be on, on available on YouTube uh, straight after a few hours uh, the when the session is finished. You guys can go back and have a look what we just did, which is extremely important, you know. Uh, when you play with your sweetness, always balance with a bit of sour. So keep that in mind. Uh, so concentrate how to balance the sweet and sour, and then bring the carbonation. For sure, carbonation gives a, a very nice uh, light, uh, so to, to the cocktail it, it lifts it up. If you do something still, so let's say a classic tea, uh, still tea, it will not have the same because the stillness is just like a bit too heavy. Imagine that when you go to uh, a nice uh, fine dining restaurant, uh, probably find a, a good fine dining restaurant, they always start give you a very little uh, sparkling water because sparkling water is also great on its own as a great uh, uh, palate cleanser. So it really works when you really tantle your senses. So it really works as a wake up. So thinking about what not you should do, think about what we can do, and this is the thing that I always think focus on the on um, on the sweet and sour, and definitely work on something much more light per lash, not still. So this is the trick, and not concentrating, looking to uh, tropical flavors because we need them for another taste. But all, work on citrus, you know, work on something fresh. Uh, herbal, uh, dry, and bitter. So those are the things that we want to really focus. Yeah? More so questions, Janice? That's it, Giovanni. That's it for today. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. I, 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 today was a great, great question. I, I you know, really enjoy when, when you guys interacting, uh, uh, whatever you are watching, guys, if it's your bar, your office, your home, we really enjoy the fact that you ask questions to us because this is what we do. We are an educational school here and we like to share our knowledge. Now, to wrap up the section today, today was about introduction to the five categories of the cocktail zero. So the aperitif, then we discussed about the food friendly, the teas and coffee, the outdoor pool and garden, and then we discussed, we, well, we introduced the tiki style. Now, today, the focus was not on all of them, but it was the focus on the aperitif. So the aperitif, we've been just talking about with all those characteristics that you should look looking for, the bitterness, the dry. So really, that carbonation helps to have all this. And so this is what we know we've been taught today. And aperitif has been there for, I mean, as, as long as I've got memory, always you had an aperitif before definitely a meal. That's the time you want to enjoy your activity. So I will say that from Mr. G uh, and Liquid LMB team and the rest of the crew here at the ICCA Dubai, thank you very much from my side. I will pass to you, Shanaz, to do the rest. And then Karun will do the closing and he will tell you about how to actually download the rest of the recipes. Thank you very much. And thank you for, the, uh, for joining us today. See you next week with the food friendly category. That's what we're going to talk about next week. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Thank you, Mr. G. Thank you everyone for attending. It was a pleasure to have you with us and look forward to having you with us next week, next Tuesday at the same time. Over to you, Karun. Thank you, Giovanni and Shanaz, for a fantastic session. A quick note, you can download today's recipe from the handout section. Also, an email will soon follow with the replay video of this webinar together with the handouts as well. Lastly, we encourage you to recreate the apparatus 
demonstrated today and share them on your social media platforms by tagging Liquid Olympic and also at ICC Dubai. We look forward to seeing you again for the next session on next Tuesday. And yeah, goodbye from all of us here. Ciao. <laughs>